Okay. Um, Adam uh, approached me and asked me if I would do um, a webinar for the uh, COVID-19 charity effort. Um, and what I decided to do was aim that at those who weren't really currently using digital, but were looking to get into it, um, not really sure where to start. And obviously, um, due to the, the issues with um, Corona and everyone not practicing at the moment, um, everyone is on a bit of a tight budget. Um, and in a post-corona world, we'll probably be tightening our belts, um, but that shouldn't be a barrier to adapting to using new, new technology. And in fact, adapting digital workflows um, will be beneficial for all of us. Um, so what is digital dentistry? Basically, um, it's dental technologies using digital or computer controlled components to facilitate dental procedures as opposed to the traditional methods that we've used uh, involving electrical and mechanical. Um, so you might think, what kind of sorcery is this? Um, what I wanted to do was kind of explain to you why digital dentistry might actually be beneficial for us to use and why it might be beneficial to get into in the future. Um, and the first point to make is that um, digital dentistry can actually um, provide cost savings um, in practice due to reduced use of raw materials, quicker turnaround times, better communication with um, your laboratory. It's also potentially better for the environment because we use um, less um, uh, dental materials, um, when we're using computerized technology. Uh, we also potentially using additive technologies like 3D printing, um, which um, use less less materials than some of the, the more traditional subtractive methods. Um, and digital dentistry also enhances patient communication. Um, I've found, certainly since I've been um, using 2D and 3D digital technology to explain to patients' treatment plans, that it's been very well received and the picture speaks a thousand words. <laughs> Um, and I think for patients, you can get them on board by engaging them in, um, with the technology that you're using and specific to them themselves. So what I decided to do was break this down into current digital applications that are available to us. And that's in seven parts um, or, or areas. And I'm going to discuss each of these in turn. Um, you can see them there, I won't discuss you know, each of them at the moment, I'll just go through each individually as we, as we move on. Um, but what I've tried to do in each of these segments is to look at how you um, can get involved in this as a practitioner um, with minimal outlay. Um, so firstly, digital photography. Now digital photography has been around for quite some time. Um, quite a lot of people are using it, but not everyone is using um, digital photography routinely. Um, it's ideal for um, taking before and after records um, for patients, which if you're like me, you can spend some time scrutinizing the outcomes um, of the treatments that you've performed. Um, it's great for patient communication, as I mentioned, and obviously for, for legal records. But it's also very, very good for 2D smelting, which we'll discuss a bit more um, shortly. And um, I don't know if anyone, one of you have heard of the eLab shade matching system, but I'm going to discuss this a wee bit further um, in the next few slides. I think this is, is, is quite an exciting development um, involving digital photography, um, the provi provision of aesthetic restorations um, with um, better shade matching. So your basic kit requirements are going to be a digital SLR camera, a macro lens and a, a ring flash. And you don't have to buy that brand new. You can buy that second hand on eBay. Um, you know, just to keep the cost low. So you can get in at the ground level without having to buy, buy a brand new camera. Um, you will need retractors, mirror, contrastors, and a black background. That black background could literally be a black sheet. Um, Adam's got a fancy setup in practice. You don't need to have that. You just need to have a black background for taking um, your, your portrait photos extraordinarily. Um, and you can get a photo box. Um, if you're interested in these kind of things, um, I follow Denti Photo on Instagram. Um, and they've got an online shop. And I know that the IDDA also have an online shop with um, various bits and pieces of photography equipment that you can purchase. In terms of courses, there are a lot of courses out there. But there's actually, if you look online, there's some online free courses. Future Learn do a great course, which is in five parts. 
um, completely free um, for anyone to, to log into. And I'd suggest that if you haven't already started with that, that you, you, you get yourself a camera and get onto um, one of these photo free photography courses. Um, with specific to the eLab system, this is a, a shade matching system that was created by Sasha Hine. Um, it um, uses Adobe Lightroom technology. You would need a polarized, cross polarizing lens filter, which you can see there. Um, and you also need a white balance grayscale card to be able to take the photographs required for the system. Um, now, they are not particularly expensive, but if you work with a dental laboratory, um, Steve Campbell very kindly supplied those two parts for me without any cost. Um, and the dental laboratory have the software there um, that they will use once you've taken the photographs um, to, to then get the correct value um, of the um, image of the dentine. Now, there's specific camera settings. Uh, which depends on your, your camera and the flash that you use. Your laboratory would help you set that up. Um, and once you have taken a photograph that is sent to your laboratory, it's uploaded into Adobe Lightroom um, and an accurate digital color value of the dentine um, of the adjacent teeth is created so that then the restoration can be um, created with a replication of that ceramic restoration recipe. Um, there's other uses for it though, it's not just limited to creating ceramic, aesthetic ceramic restorations. You can use this system and take photographs of dentine composite shades to match the best shades to the anterior truth and you can use it to monitor um, the outcome of tooth bleaching as well. This is a, a case of my own, there's an uh, upper right one implant crown, uh, the implant crown that was first created by the lab, you can see the shade wasn't quite um, ideal. Um, so what I did was I took a cross polarizing photo of that crown in position with the grayscale card and you can see where the difference in the value of the existing upper left one and the upper right one implant crown is. So the laboratory then created me a new crown based on that and the patient was happy with that and I think that looks a lot better. Um, so that's an excellent system. Um, I know that Nexus Dental are using that at the moment. If anyone wants to get into that, there's lots of information out there online about it as well. Um, moving on to smile design. Um, smile design is, is really useful for planning your cases, but also patient communication. Um, there are some basic and free smile design systems out there that probably wouldn't really recommend using them necessarily, they're a wee bit difficult to get involved with, but there are low cost subscription based online um, design solutions like Smile Designer Pro, or the system that I use personally is Smile Cloud. There's a low monthly subscription to that, you get 20 cases that you can you can use it with. Um, and it's it's very simple, I'm gonna show you a video in a minute um, of how the process works. Um, there are more comprehensive but expensive solutions, for example, Digital Smile Design, 3Shape, Exacad. These are excellent um, digital smile um, design uh, software, but there is a bigger outlay for these. So I, I would say if you wanted to get into Smile Design, and um, without spending too much money, I'd look at something like Smile Cloud. Um, moving on to that. Basically, Smile Cloud is an online service. You log in, you get a month free. You upload your pre-treatment photographs. Ideally, that's a full series of extra and intra oral photos and STL models. Um, but as a minimum, you can add a upload a minimum uh, portrait smiling and retracted anterior view uh, with the contrastor. You follow the on-screen guidance. It's really, really simple to follow. There's YouTube tutorials there. You can't go wrong. When I first started to use it, I didn't really have any issues with it. It's really self-explanatory. Um, you choose. Um, your uh, two-dimensional tooth setup um, from a, a number of suggested designs. You can create multiple multiple designs for your patients, and you can then um, make measurements for things like crown lengthening. You can add your patient in the lab into that and communicate with your patient um, via the via the software um, and have your patient accept that. And then you can actually create three D biometric library based on that design. Um, or you can have uh, Smile Cloud actually create your 3D biometric design themselves to be used for your, your research support. Um, this is one of my own patients. This was a full arch implant case. Um, he had four remaining upper teeth. I sent a couple of smile designs. 
he was happy with the first design, so that's what we went with. Um, but for him to be able to see that image and see what it might look like, it was really quite powerful for him. Um, and I think, you know, it, it gets patients on board um, at quite a low outlay. Now, I'm going to play this video for you. This is a smile cloud video. Uh, Sandy, sorry to stop you there. Um, I've had a message on the um, uh, from the from the chat saying it's actually coming up as a split screen. Is there any way you can share it off just one screen so it fills up the whole image? Yeah, do you know what it is? It's the screen reversal. It's the that should be better. Is that better? Let's have a look. I'm just checking it now. Sandy, can you do uh, just duplicate slideshow? I will do the, yeah, I'm going to duplicate. I changed the display setting. If I do the duplicate slideshow, yeah. That's better. There you go. Okay. okay. Thanks, Sandy. Perfect. So it's fairly self explanatory. I'm not going to talk through this video now. Okay, um, now in terms of, that, that was my design, I'm moving on to digital scanning now. Sorry for the, the issues with the, the presentation there. Um, digital scanning is basically, um, if, if you aren't involved in it yet, you don't have a scanner. Um, the digital scanner will take um, multiple optical images and then reconstruct them three-dimensionally. Um, and the technology is now at least as true and accurate as conventional impression methods, certainly for short spans. Um, I think full arch technology um, is, is, is moving in that direction. I don't think it'll be long before that's, that's um, more reliable. Um, it can be quite technique sensitive, but I find, if I have found after using a number of different systems that it's actually quite um, quick to pick up. Each system has their own protocol. Um, in terms of choice, um, there's quite a wide range in cost. Um, issues that you might want to consider are portability, um, of the actual um, device, the accuracy of the scanning uh, and the usability of the device itself um, and the, the actual software that comes along with it. Um, there's a number of different systems out there. If you are in a position where you don't have the um, finances um, to, to lay out for an intra oil tier side scanner, you can utilise your laboratory scanners. Most labs will have, um, or most digitally um, trained labs will have uh, lab scanners. And if you send them conventional impression, either elastomeric or, or, or silicone, ensuring it's of excellent quality um, and you record adequate soft tissues if you're going to be merging up the dipole, the lab can digitise um, either the impression or more ideally the conventional cast. And they'll charge you around about eight to ten pounds for that. So, um, and they will send you that digital file, and then you can do with it what you will. Um, and that's a little three D scanner there. This is um, Exacad system. This is something my lab sent me, and I was able to send that to the patient. Um, and so that was a digital scan. The lab made me wax up, and then I was able to send that onto the patient. And you can see that that's quite powerful image for the patient to see of their own wax up in three dimensions. You can toggle that on and off. I think for a patient to be able to see that, it completely free. Um, that's that's a very it's a very powerful way of explaining to them what we're planning to do uh, and communicating with them. Now Moving on to Home Beam CT, I think um, Home Beam CT uh, has revolutionised revolutionised implant dentistry. Um, it allows accurate planning and at less and less radiation doses um, as the machines um, become more advanced in technology. Um, in terms of um, the hardware, obviously there's quite a big outlay for the CBCT scanning hardware initially, and if you're in practice that doesn't have the ability of um, a CBCT machine, um, it's not the end of the world. You can actually um, look at companies such as CT Dent, who are in all the big cities, um, Manchester, Birmingham, and London, 
on local taxis with CT facilities. Um, I know I'm sending quite a lot of my CT scans to add in office practice, dentists in the lock, um, and those dipom files will just be sent back to you. And in terms of the actual software that's used to view the scans, um, there are a few software out there. Bluescan Bio is one of them uh, for PC, Osirix, for Mac. Um, there's inexpensive but better technology such as Dentate Guide, which is a cleaning system, and um, that's available via the DD lab. And then there's others which are more expensive, um, they've been around for longer, they've, 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 they've had um, a lot of um, research and development, such as Dentate Guide, Simplan, and Strength and Diagnostics. Um, I personally use Dentate Guide and Dentate Guide Simplan. But if you wanted to get in at the, the base level and use something that's completely free, then something like this kind of viral would be where you might start. Um, guided surgery, uh, so I'm an implant surgeon, and for me, um, guided implant surgery uh, can be uh, a useful tool. Now, particularly when you have significant anatomical structures that you may want to avoid, such as ideal and sinus, maybe adjacent teeth. Or if you are placing multiple implants on a large case and you want to have planned in advance and be able to execute on the day of treatment. Um, so, so, the guided EP um, can be highly guided or fully guided, uh, with the, the preparation and the implant are placed in one. Uh, or um, you can use unguided. I think it really, it's really quite important to remember, to remember that. No technology is 100% accurate, that applies to guides as well. Um, so we should always be able to, to, to place implants unguided. Um, in terms of the types of guides you can have, two of the soft tissue at home level guides, um, and there's various systems which will either be open or closed. Um, now, those systems such as such as simple or you have to have a guide, they won't have to control the guide by design. There are systems such as the entity guide and the diagnostics which will allow you to design the design plan to then have the guide to check that you have to have a guide. There are also technologies where they have to take some of these questions and then they will just accept the very open technology. This is a case that I don't want to run through them. Planned recently, and unfortunately, we've not been able to do that. And I'm just going to do my own plan. 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 Um, uh, that's, that's really useful for, for 
Okay, yeah, so computer aided design, um, I'll, I'll kind of be quite quick with this because obviously um, we're probably short on a bit of time now. Autodesk Mesh, Mesh Mixer is the best free tutorial, uh, free CAD design software. Um, I use that um, regularly. There are other software available, but that's quite expensive in terms of outlay. I'd suggest that um, if people want to get into it, you just download the Mesh Mixer software and use the YouTube tutorials, which are quite self-explanatory, um, to start making um, models, basing models, uh, wax ups, etc. Um, this is one of my own cases that I recently did for an implant placement on the lower right molar. Um, I uploaded the upper and lower models. You can see the existing lower right molar there, which is hemisected and failing tooth. That's the upper model, which is um, an open shell and occlusion. And you can toggle that on and off. You can make it transparent so that you can still see the occlusion while working on the model. So what I did with this was created a third model. I extracted the existing tooth, just following Mesh Mixer tutorials, and placed a new crown where I wanted the implant restoration to be. Um, and that was then based. I can print that model off. I can discuss that model with the patient. I can explain to the patient what the dimensions of that are going to be. The teeth, um, the 3D teeth are from the Christian Venice Tooth Library. Um, and it's a powerful tool um, as well as being able to then um, export that into my CD, um, CBCT planning software. Um, it's a great tool for explaining to the patient um, for the, the outcome that's expected, including the zenith position, the propeller, um, etc. So that's one that I did at home by myself, quite simple um, and completely free. Um, in terms of uh, computer uh, aided manufacture, um, there is milling and 3D printing. Um, milling is a subtractive uh, manufacturing process. There are uh, lab based solutions um, which um, can be out, can be in house with a lab or outsourced to bigger companies uh, like Atlantis and Kiatek for making um, metal, ceramic, and resin um, restorations out of pucks or blanks of this this type of material. Um, sometimes it's a bit cheaper to do it that way. Sometimes um, it's a bit cheaper to do it in house. The dense plaster owner have the CEDIC uh, machines, which you can purchase. Um, for making your own uh, crowns and um, restorations, even guides, um, depending on the depending on the um, the the the, the shade mill that you've chosen, and the pine mill can mill ceramic, plastic, and metal, so you can do quite a lot with that. Um, they are either wet or dry mill, being sintered for monolithic blocks. There is a quite a high financial outlay, but it's worth just doing a calculation as to how many crowns you're placing, what you're paying out on a lap fee every month, and then what you would be likely to pay out in a higher purchase. And you might be pleasantly surprised to find that it would cost you less to have a chair shade um, milling machine than it would to send the work out to a laboratory. But it really depends on how much work you put into the practice. Um, I would probably start with posterior restorations. It's, there's a bit of skill development in terms of steering and glazing for aesthetics, but the, the benefit of it is there's a very quick turnaround around time for restorations. Um, in terms of um, 3D printing, this is what I'm kind of more into myself at the moment. 
Um, the dental uses for 3D printer, again, kind of models, guides, aligners, retainers, trays, night guards, you name it, frameworks, temporaries. Um, you can outsource some of the, the kind of metal-based um, 3D printing to big companies like Renishaw, Atlantis for um, implant frameworks, bridge frameworks, Myline Tech for um, Invisalign, um, or companies like um, IDDA or the DDA Lab who will, will, will make aligners for you. But you can actually also purchase in practice um, 3D printers. They're resin-based. Um, the technology um, is, is stereolithographic um, DLP or LCD. Uh, these each utilize a UV light source um, and a photosensitive resin that is cured onto a build platform. Um, they're surprisingly accurate, accurate and reliable, um, and you know definitely in the 50 to 100 micron range. Printing times, depending on what it is you're printing, um, the accuracy you need in the size, it can be minutes to hours. Um, now, if you're looking to get on board with this, the good news is you can buy quite inexpensive 3D printers, which are based on UV LCD technology, something like the Elegoo Mars um, or Pro, which you can get starting on Amazon from £230. Um, you would need to purchase a, a wash and cure station, certainly if you have any restorations that are going to be um, going anywhere the, near the mouth. Um, and you can see these here. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I've put a YouTube link to, to the Elegoo Mars so that you can see the setup and how it works. Um, but that's that's the cheapest way of getting involved with 3D printing. You, you really probably won't be able to... to produce um, quantities, so it, you know, we'd be printing off a set of models potentially at a time with that. Um, there's moderately priced stereolithographic uh, printers, uh, the best known of those is probably the Formlabs 2 and 3. The Formlabs 3 is the latest one, it will cost about 6 grand new with the wash and cure, um, but you could pick up a Formlabs 2 now second hand for approximately a grand and a half. It's the Formlabs 2 that I'm personally using, um, and this is it here. Um, and you can see that you can print multiple models, guides, etc., um, using this system. Um, the Form Labs um, comes with a preform software, and I'm just going to run you through um, how I would print off a model. So I would select the Form Labs 2 printer that I've got, I select the type of resin that I'm using, um, and in this case, I'd be using grey model resin. And in terms of the resolution of the print that I want, um, your times will vary and your accuracy will vary based on what you choose there. You can see here, this is actually the, the print platform simulation. And what I'm going to do is bring in um, an existing STL file of the mesh mixer model that I created before. And we'll just wait for that file to open. And there it is. And you can see that I've got some supports already on here. It's really important. Um, you can position you can position the um, model anywhere on the the, the, uh, the platform, um, and you can move it around. But it's really important not to expand that or reduce it in size because obviously it's quite important that the model stays the, the size that it should be um, in, in dentistry, or in relation to, to dental application. Um, what I've done here is change the position. It's really important that when you set these prints up, that you set them up so that the the heel of a model um, or the, the non-fitting surface of a restoration is attached to the build plate because you don't want any inaccuracies in terms of fit from where the supports attach. What's happening here is the supports are being generated. You've got to make sure you've got enough supports for the model or else the model will fail or the, the print will fail. Once these supports are generated, you'll see on the right-hand side, there's print time, print layers, and the amount of volume, the volume of the resin you're going to use. Once you've set that up and you've checked printability, literally just send it to your printer. With the Formlabs 2, you can just send it either through the network in Bluetooth or via USB, and that will, that will, will now print off and be ready if you set it off overnight, it'll be ready for you in the morning. Um, and then you just wash and cure that. Um, so that is just a kind of a, a bit of a, a, a brief kind of um, look at what you can do to get into to digital. I hope it's been helpful for people that aren't really involved in digital at the moment. Um, thank you for listening. Um, 
obviously, this uh, this effort was for a, a very big cause, which is a pre deep uh, COVID-19 initiative that Adam and the IDDA guys set up um, to raise money for um, 3D printing uh, of visors um, and um, ventilators of hearts. Um, I myself am also, have also set up a PPE donation page, which is PPE donation NHS COVID-19. So if anyone has any PPE going sphere, um, if they could think about donating that. Um, and any of the links um, that you've seen on the um, presentation today, if you want them, I, I'm happy for you to request them uh, from me via email. Thanks for listening, everyone.